Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise God, all you angels. Praise God, all you heavenly host. Let us all praise God. Let us worship God this day. Let us join together in prayer. Let us pray. God of grace and glory, we praise you from the heights and from the depths, in the heavens, on earth, and from the seas, in the courts of power and from the sidewalks of our lives. Your splendor shines from a manger where the light of the world was born to pierce the darkness. In the fragility of flesh, you are revealed to us face to face. And so we gather with all people in every place who have glimpsed your salvation and grace 
to rejoice in your love born for us. Together we worship and praise you as Creator, Christ, and Spirit, Source of Life, Glorious Light, Wisdom of the Ages. Source of all hope, you invite us to live in the light and discover the splendor of your glory. We confess we often choose to remain in the darkness instead. We allow our fears and hurts to hold us hostage. Our expectations of life prevent us from seeing new and real possibilities. You offer us unconditional love, but we expect others to earn our love. Forgive us, we pray. Friends, here is the good news of the Gospel. Jesus Christ is our light and our salvation. In him we are made new. Let us give thanks to God and be at peace with ourselves and with one another. God of heaven and earth, we cannot cease to praise you for your coming among us in the baby of Bethlehem. May the new life born in the manger awaken new life in us and allow hope to dawn in the year ahead. We pray all this in the name of the one who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 61, verse 10, to chapter 62, verse 3. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the heights, praise him all you angels of his, praise him all his host, praise him sun and moon, praise him all you shining stars, praise him highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed the bounds which cannot and all cattle, creeping things 
and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all the rulers of the world, young men and women alike, old and young. From the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 22 to 40. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people of Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna the daughter of Phinuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Well, Christmas Day has come and gone and we enter into the last week of the year 2020. And what a year it has been. For this final online service of the year, and as a final Christmas gift to all of you, a short sermon. They say that a picture tells a thousand words, and I came across this picture when I was getting ready for this service this week. In many ways, it reminded me of that common image that we often see as one year draws to a close and a new year begins, The picture of an old man, old father time, representing the year that is drawing to a close alongside a baby, representing the new year that is about to begin. But this image is actually depicting the scene that we encounter in today's suggested reading from the Gospel of Luke, the story of Jesus as an infant child being presented in the temple and the reaction that his appearance inspires in old Simeon and Anna, two elderly, faithful people, who spend a great deal of their time in the temple precincts. There is 
A great beauty to this story from Luke, captured by the artist who drew this picture. It is in so many ways a coming together, a, a juxtaposition, the old and the young, the past and the future, long-held expectations and fulfilled promises. Joyful recognition that the child who was carried into the temple by Mary and Joseph was the very one for whom Simeon and Anna had been waiting. The appearance of that child was a sign of hope. Simeon and Anna were old. They knew that life in this world could be challenging. They had known loss and sorrow and grief. They knew that life was not always easy, and yet, when they saw that child, they were overcome with joy, with peace, with hope. So it was, and so it is. We sometimes speak of hope in the Advent season as we light a candle of hope, but there are times when we forget how central and important and powerful hope is in the human spirit. We sometimes forget that one of the three great cardinal virtues of the Christian life is in fact hope. Now faith, hope, and love abide these three. The greatest indeed may be love, but faith and hope are in close proximity. And it can be good, perhaps especially at the end of the kind of year that 2020 has been, to call to mind that Christian spirituality calls us to be people of hope, to look at the world in all its beauty and in all its brokenness, and still keep hope alive. Hope that hatred and bitterness and sorrow and injustice can and will be overcome. Hope that conflicts will cease. Hope that the peace and goodwill that the angels announced can still be experienced in this life. Hope that people will continue to work together even in the face of terrible challenges like this present pandemic, in ways that will strengthen our sense of community with each other and our care for one another. Hope that each one of us will be able to face the coming year with all the challenges and struggles that will inevitably come, with a deepened sense of joy, with resilience, with strength, with courage, with wisdom. It's good to remember that woven into Simeon's words was an acknowledgement to Mary that there would also be difficult days ahead for her and for the child. Simeon's words were ominous words, speaking of the fact that the child's destiny would lead to the rising and falling of many, and that things would happen that would pierce Mary's soul. Life was not always going to be easy for the child or for his parents, but Simeon's acknowledgement did not diminish or deter him from his joyful, hopeful realization that the promised one of God had come. I find Simeon to be an inspiring character. We do well to learn from his example, to look upon the Christ child as the source of this world's greatest hope, for that is who he was, and that is who he is even now. But looking upon the child is not enough. We also need to follow him, to obey him, to align our lives with his ways, his teachings, his purposes, his intentions for us and for the church and for the world. That is, if we ever hope to live into the great and wondrous vision that he came to share with us. But as a start, we do well to draw from Simeon and Anna's example, to celebrate the coming of the Christ child, to keep our eyes on Christ as this tumultuous year draws to a close and as a new year dawns. May the coming year be one of great blessing, great joy, great love, great hope for you, for your loved ones, and for this world that God so dearly loves. Thanks be to God, and amen.
Gracious and eternal God, as year gives way to year, and throughout all the changing seasons of our lives, your love for us is so constant, so faithful, so life-giving. We give thanks for your grace which sustains us, nourishes us, inspires us, guides us. O God, even in the face of the challenges and struggles of life, gratitude nonetheless fills our hearts and minds. We are thankful for the gift of life. Thankful for all that you do to sustain and nourish our lives. Thankful for blessings too numerous to count, yet upon which we depend each and every day. We give thanks for the good news at the heart of this Christmas season, of the coming of your beloved Son to share our life, to taste death, to carry us into your eternal presence. Allow his love to be born in our hearts, O God, his vision to fill our imaginations, his hope to strengthen us. O oh God, we also bow to offer prayers for those for whom life is a struggle, for those who wrestle with physical and mental and emotional pain, for those who suffer from addictions, from anxiety, from depression, from despair. Shine the light of your love upon them, we pray. We pray for our world. In these challenging times, O oh God, we need the wisdom and discernment that can only come from you. Bless those who serve. Bless those who lead. Bless those who care. Bless those who place themselves at risk for others. We pray for the Church. O oh God, you have poured out your Spirit upon the community of Christ's followers. Bind us together in your love, that we might serve with humility and compassion and goodness, and in so doing fulfill your purposes for us and for our world. We pray for our loved ones. Bless and be with those who share life with us, but also those who we find it difficult to love. Be with those who are isolated from family members and those who are not able to move easily in this time of restriction and limitation. We pray for our own lives. You know the burdens that we bear, some that we find it almost too difficult to bear. You know our brokenness, but you also know our hopes and dreams. You know what inspires joy and peace within us. Bless us with opportunities to rest in that joy and in that peace, so that we might reach out in love to all who you have called us to love and serve. As this new year dawns, O God, may it be a year of your favor. Bless us, bless the church, bless the world, for we offer these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Go and do justice and love kindness and walk humbly with God in all that you do. And may the love of Almighty God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the comfort and friendship of God's Holy Spirit Bless you and those you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Hello again. I would like to thank members from St. Andrews that have sent in pictures of their nativity scenes. 
I hope you enjoyed these pictures as much as I did. Merry Christmas! Happy New Year!